How's it going, people? Let's finish this. <sighs> Question 151. Are you sometimes completely unable to enter the spirit of things? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Things like this. <laughs> but I can have fun with them. Uh, 152. Do you rarely express your grievances? Uh, rarely. You know what? I often feel compelled to bitch and piss and moan and all that, and I tell myself, uh, stop it right there. Shut the fuck up, Rich. But, yes, I, I would probably complain all the time if I didn't stop myself. Instead, I try to keep it positive. It's a conscious effort I'm working on. So. 153. Do you work in spurts, being relatively inactive and then furiously active for a day or two? Uh, no. I mean, I work in spurts, but they're smaller spurts. <laughs> they're spurts of like a stretch of hours, not days. And then I enjoy an activity too. Alright. Yeah, although, I'm not inactive when I'm inactive. I'm thinking or I'm doing something, you know, I'm working on something. I do a lot of I like to write and um, edit videos and all. People might say that's inactive, but to me, I'm doing something. I love working on projects and stuff, and art and things. All right, 154. Does the number of incomplete jobs you have on hand bother you? Uh, no, I've only got one. I finished my mom's deck. Uh, I just gotta finish cleaning my place up and I've, I've been doing a little here and there. And it's coming along nicely. Now let's see if I can keep it that way. Uh, no, I really don't have a whole lot of incomplete jobs. They're they're done. They're complete. All right. One fifty-five. Do people enjoy being in your company? <laughs> you know, I have people that seem like they enjoy my company, but maybe they don't, and they're masochists. And I'm like the perfect torture for them or something. I don't know. Um, I have people that call me up and want to be around me. So I'm going to guess that they probably do, even though that's a fucking projection question. All right, 156. Could you allow someone to finish those final two words in a crossword puzzle without interfering? I would even let them finish the entire thing from start to finish. Here's what I do. If somebody goes, hey, uh, what's the, what's the, uh, you know, Greek word for I smell? I might go, oh, that's ozone. Oh, thank you. How do you spell that? All right. But otherwise, if, if they don't ask me, you know, for uh, help on their crossword puzzle, they can do the whole damn thing. It doesn't bother me. Honestly. All right. All right. 157. Do you consider the best points of most people and only rarely speak slightly of them? Uh, that's what I want to do. It doesn't really come naturally. I, I complain. I, I could, you know, point out people's faults and all that, but I just know that that sucks and people don't like that and I don't like it even when I'm doing it, so I try to say positive things and I try to bite down on those negative thoughts and words that come to the surface because that's my way of trying to turn it around, you know, turn a frown upside down and be, keep it positive. So I might think something like, oh, that guy's such a, and I'm just like, that's a, that's a pretty nice job. Yeah, that's good. Good going. So, yeah, sometimes I, sometimes I'm phony and I say positive things when I want to say negative things. I used to bitch and complain a lot more when I was younger, but this is being on the wrong side of fifty. This is wisdom. This is finding out through rep repetition that people don't like negativity. So I'm trying to keep it positive, and it seems to be working. All right. 158. Do you laugh or smile quite readily? Uh, sometimes. 
sometimes I'm really down and I I might be laughing and smiling but I'm like crying on the inside sometimes sometimes I'm really laughing and I challenge you to tell which is which uh, <laughs> yeah I I like to smile and laugh so I try to and maybe I can start feeling more upbeat because that's what it's all about life is short don't want to keep spend too much time feeling down uh, 159 are you definite and emphatic in voice and in matter in in manner uh, Wow that would be something somebody else might notice about me but uh I'm not sure uh, I hope so uh, what do you guys think um, maybe I should start asking some of my friends what do you think about me am I am I definite and emphatic <laughs> I might be that'd be cool 160 are you effusive only to close friends if at all uh, no sometimes I pretend like I am happy to see everybody sometimes I actually am and so, well, I guess that's the way you're supposed to answer that. I don't know. I mean, there's the, there's the internal me and there's the external me. Which one are you talking about? You keep wanting to know what other people think of me. That's external. It has nothing to do with what's going on inside. I just try to keep it positive. That's all. All right. Oh. 161. Are your interests and fields of knowledge so important as to give you little time for anything else? Uh, no, I make time for other things because I want to be even knowledgeable about shit I'm not knowledgeable about yet. Because things interest me. I don't want to stop. I don't want to lose my curiosity, my zest for self-improvement. Because I've seen a lot of people that know everything and they've found life's answers. They were written by a bunch of desert dwelling primitives and their folklore is good enough for them no more need to search they have the answers I know I don't I just know that the shit that is supposed to be true ain't and so I'm still searching I'm still interested in stuff and I make time for shit for understanding and stuff okay one sixty-two. Would you like to start a new activity in the area in which you live? A new one. Um, I'm always doing that. I finish an activity. I start another activity. Often in the area where I live. Oh. This is like the home stretch. I thought the questions would get better. Oh well. 163. Would you take the necessary actions to kill an animal in order to put it out of its pain? Now, there's a good question. Um, yeah, it's pretty unpleasant, but uh, yeah, I hit a car. I, I, I hit a dog once with my car and broke its back, and it was heartbreaking. I was depressed for days afterwards, but um, I couldn't leave it that way. You know, I was raised on a ranch, you know, I mean, we. We had to deal with hard realities all the time there. That's how we kept the freezer full of meat. It's unpleasant, but... And I've worked in jobs where unpleasant realities were necessary. Like, I've worked at a game reserve that was infested with rats, and we had to kill rats, and we had to kill mutilated pheasants that they were raising to, only to hunt later on anyway, uh, without their survival skills, being raised in a pen. But yeah, I, I had to do unpleasant things, and it's not... I would rather not, but I, I can do it if I have to. And then I'll feel bad for quite a while. All right. Once, 164. Is it easy for you to relax? Yeah, I like relaxing. I like to kick it sometimes and take it easy. I used to meditate and shit even. I still do once in a while. I'll start shutting things down and I'll just sink down into myself and 
project outward and try to let my mind do what it wants to do. So, yeah, I'm good with that. I like doing that. 165. Do you have little regret on past misfortunes or failures? What's the point of beating yourself up over shit you can't do anything about? It's done! Um, yeah, sometimes I regret things, you know. Sometimes I might even dwell on them, but most of the time I try to steer towards, towards new things. So I can have new things to regret later on, you know. I don't want to wear out all my old regrets. You know, I want to make new ones, you know, and maybe a few things I could be proud of. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, I used to dwell on the past. I, I don't anymore. I know what happens when I dwell on the past. It, I start circling the drain, and then I'm going down. So, I stay up and buoyant if I can by avoiding shit I can't do anything about. You know, unless it teaches me a lesson, then I hang on to that for the lesson. You know, so I don't repeat mistakes, because that's boring. Mistakes cost. So if I paid for something, why would I pay for the same thing again? I already learned that from that mistake. If I'm repeating mistakes, I didn't learn shit. Okay. Anyway. Okay. 166. Does the idea of fear or apprehension give you a physical reaction? Yeah! You should see me uh, in a theater watching a horror movie for the first time. I mean, I'm dancing all around and drumming my feet and grabbing a chair. And I get into that, man. I, I really buy into it. So, yeah. I could read a book and even get scared sometimes. I've read some... The Shining was creepy. And the book, but I never quite got it right in film form. But, God, creepy, scared the fuck out of me. All right. 167. Can you trust the decision of your judgment in an emotional situation in which you were involved? It's like this. If I'm the captain of my own destiny, then I have to, even if I'm going to maybe have an emotional reaction, and maybe my objectivity's a little off. I gotta use the equipment I got. So, yeah, I'm gonna make decisions. If I'm emotional, I might remind myself, hey, now, you're being, you're feeling emotional right now, Rich, so uh, just keep that in mind when you're making your decisions, and maybe think twice as hard on your course of action. Okay. 168. Could someone else consider that you were really active? I bet they could. They just use their powers of observation and watch me while I'm active. If they saw me when I'm inactive, though, they probably wouldn't think I'm active. I mean, how long are they observing me, this someone? Sometimes I'm pretty damn active, and sometimes I'm you know, I'm like a, a lazy man trapped in a busy man's body. They should have an operation to fix that. All right. 169. Do you find it hard to get started on a task that needs to be done? Uh, if I'm dreading that task. But often that's a good reason to start it right away, because then you're going to be done all the sooner. So... Uh, I like to just nip it in the bud, get it done. Get her done. All right. 170. Are you opposed to the probation system for criminals? Uh, you know, sometimes you got to forgive. Uh, not everybody stays a criminal their whole life. You know, allow people a chance to change. But, I mean, if somebody's a puke, and they've always been a puke, and they're still a puke, Fuck them! Throw them in a cage and leave them there. All right. But otherwise, I'm all for forgiveness. I mean, people make mistakes, you know, and learn from them, hopefully. Or they ought to. All right. 171. Do you spend much time on needless worries? Uh, no, because that's annoying. Um, I do worry, and then I go, all right, let's push that aside. <clears throat> Fine example. I was going to 
I had got my, my stepdad when he he died a while back uh, left me his vehicle and I already had a vehicle and my brother-in-law is one of those grab the bulls by the horns kind of guy and he's like hey dude uh, you need to sell that car so I here let me quickly put an ad on Craigslist BAM it was sold and I'm like dude I I gotta find a pink slip and I'm a messy person and I was like I I went home and I looked at my desk drawer and I couldn't find it and I went oh shit I can't find a pink slip and I've got a buyer in the morning and I tore my place apart and I couldn't find it it wasn't in the car and I'm like oh shit oh shit oh shit and I went all right enough worrying all right I need to find out where I put that pink slip I know the answer I just can't think of it now all right and then I stopped worrying about it I distracted myself and then I went to bed I woke up at fucking four in the morning and I knew where it was it was in a briefcase I opened it up there it was I fucking stuck it to the uh, you know to the uh, bulletin board in my place and I went back and I slept like a baby so how's that all right 172 in a disagreement do you find it hard to understand how the other person fails to see your side and thus agree with you um, uh, maybe I think that's happened sure um, I'm a pretty understanding guy and I I don't know I haven't had any real disagreements in a while I, 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 mm, I can't pull one up right now I usually can see the other side I'm pretty good at that I I try to walk a mile in someone else's shoes and all that stuff all right One seventy-three. Do you cope with everyday problems of living quite well? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I get rattled, but uh, for the most part, I do pretty good. I, I have some coping skills that I try to pull those out and use them. You know, uh, that time to calm down, time to, you know, time to think and get these things figured out. So. I try to cope. I have to. Otherwise, I'm completely out of control. I need to control my life, so I do. And I've been doing it without this cult's helping me. All right. Although I may do a video sometime after this uh, where I explain my beef with Scientology, because I, I do have a tiny history with them, just a tiny one. It could have been worse. All right. 74. Are you usually truthful to others? Yeah, because lying is a lot of work. You got to keep track of all those lies and remember them. And remember who you told them to, because you probably told somebody a different lie. My, my father used to be a... My father's different now, but when I was growing up, he was a pathological liar. He, he just couldn't help himself. And um, I... That kind of made me not want to be that way. So I guess when I was a younger guy, I did try to impress people and tell them bullshit. But then I met some other real liars, and I could see right through them, and I went, oh, that's just, that's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed with this person. So I tend to be pretty straightforward and truthful. You know, I, I save those lies to save my ass or to save face or to save someone's feelings. Otherwise, I'll just... I'll just stick to the truth. It's easier. I'm too lazy to lie. All right. <clears throat> 175. <clears throat> 175. Would you rather wait for something to happen as opposed to causing it? I like it when both situations occur. Sometimes I cause things to happen. Sometimes I wait. You know, like when I fish, sometimes I let the worm do the work. Other times I'm jigging and I'm tossing over another. It just depends. You know, I, I'm of both schools of thought. Not a very good answer, but a truthful one. All right. 176. Do you spend too freely 
In relation to your income, I used to. I'd get depressed and I would buy something and then I'd get depressed again. I'd go shopping to distract myself and I'd buy on credit and I would dig a deeper hole for myself. I finally got out of that hole and I realized that doesn't work. Just take a walk. It doesn't cost anything. Or go somewhere like here. You know, there's a lot of places in this town to go to that don't cost anything. So, I'm not a cheapskate, but I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more in control of myself these days. No, I, have ex I actually have money left over most, most of the time, and I, put, I save. I, could, I need to do more, but I, I am doing some. I'm saving more. I haven't even spent anything today except on a Subway sandwich. That's all I spent money on today. And the gas, I guess, it took to drive here. Because it's too far to walk. All right. 177. Can you take a calculated risk without too much worry? Uh, uh, sometimes. Uh, what's wrong with worrying, though? I mean, sometimes that, I mean, I might take a risk and worry still, but I'm still going to do it. If it's a, a risk I think is worth taking. Uh, hey, you know, I can't help my emotions sometimes. I just control my actions as much as possible. Sometimes you just got to take a risk, that's all. 178. If you were involved in a slight car accident, would you really take the trouble to see that any damages you did was made good? Yeah. You got to take responsibility in life. That's the way I feel. Yeah. Haven't had one of those in a while. Quite a while. But, uh, yeah, I've always uh, been responsible. I like to think so. 179. Do others push you around? No, not really, not, not very much. Um, I might let somebody think that they're, you know, calling the shots. I'm Because I am letting them, but they're not going to push me around necessarily. I'm just an agreeable kind of guy. If somebody's trying to punk me, though, I might punk them back. Just to let them know, hey, that doesn't feel good, does it? All right. 180. Do you make allowances for your friends where, with others, you might judge more severely? Yeah, afraid. So that's the benefit of being a friend of mine. Um, 181. Do you often ponder over your inferiority? Um, yeah, I guess sometimes I like to see where I could be. I can improve things, you know, and I find I can always improve things. So, inferiority, huh? Wow. Uh, yeah, I think I probably have a slight inferiority complex that used to be much greater when I was younger. But nowadays, I just sort of like, hey, this is me, fuck it. Good enough. You know, I just try to improve myself. All right. 182. Do people criticize you to others in my presence? I don't know, let me use my psychic powers to figure out what people are saying about me right now. <laughs> I don't know! Maybe. Probably. I hear people bitch about other people. When they're not around, I wonder if those people know that they're being bitched about when they're not around. I don't. kind of don't give a fuck. Alright. 183. Are you embarrassed? By a hearty greeting, such as a kiss, hug, or pat on the back if done in public. I like kisses and hugs and pats on the back. Uh, even if I was embarrassed, I'd still be enjoying it. Uh, it's all good. I, I mean, I grew up in a family that does, didn't express a lot of affection, wasn't very huggy, but I noticed that they've gotten more huggy over the years. And it's nice. I like hugs. Love giving them, I love receiving them. It's kind of almost the same thing, except somebody initiates it, or I do. No, it doesn't bother me. I wish it happened more often. Okay. Although in private, it's even better. Alright. 184. Do you frequently 
not do something you want to do because of other people's desires. You gotta get along, you gotta like, you know, the road of compromise and on the road to my horizon, you know? Uh, yeah, I, I, sometimes people do what I want to do and it, because it's my idea and some, sometimes I put my desires on the back seat and go with someone else because you can't be a selfish prick all the time, you know? It isn't all about me, you know? So, what was the question again? <laughs> you know, I try to respect other people and, you know, I don't often, I guess, I guess maybe case by case situation. All right. 180, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, 185. Do you sometimes, are you sometimes convinced of the correctness of your opinions about a subject even though you are not an expert? Yeah. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. I mean, watch Fox, Fox News sometime, man. If you could call that news. They're not experts, and they're expressing their opinion on shit. Good thing they're not running the country. I guess they're trying to. All right. Yeah, I'm not an expert like those auditors. They're experts. Trained experts. <laughs> uh, am I an expert at anything? I don't know. I'm pretty good at some things. Though. I've got skills. 186. Do you often find yourself going off in all directions at once? How can you do that? You're in one spot. That direction is not where you're at, and that direction isn't where you're at. And, you know, all those directions around. I mean, Scooby-Doo tried that, and it, right at the point of his tail, it got stopped, you know. And You can't go into all directions at once. It's physically impossible. Are you talking about a, a psychic thing, you know, where you're thinking all these, a thought here, a thought there, and I, I could be like that once in a while. Although it ain't productive, so I, I usually try to focus on one thing. Be in one place and go in one direction at a time. I guess, I think. Uh... I guess the answer is probably no. Uh, 187. Do your acquaintances seem to think more of your abilities than you do? Um, they could be blowing smoke rings up my butt. And that ain't cool. Although it's kind of nice. Uh, you know, I've had people like uh, tell me I was really good at something. And I was like, eh, that wasn't as good as... Uh, well, hey, that's great. Thank you. That's happened. Um, I've had people like a job that I've done better than I did. I, I'm a, I have high standards for myself. What can I say? Uh, 188. Is the idea of death, or even reminders of death, abhorrent to you? I'm in a fucking cemetery. I like it. No, death is just what happens when you're done living. <laughs> Eh, oblivion, in my opinion. Um, wouldn't it be interesting if it isn't, though? We'll find out when we, you know, I'll jump off that cliff when I get to it, you know? <laughs> uh, so, um, no, it's sad. It's sad that people can't be alive longer, you know? But I think death isn't as sad as suffering and illness and feeling completely horrible. You know, death could be a release even. It is, it's not abhorrent, okay? It's just kind of sad. But it's what happens. It's, it's the way of the world, you know? you know? That's how coral reefs are formed. and That's how life is, you know? It's constantly renewing and dying out and renewing. And we're no different. Okay. 189. Having settled an argument out, do you continue to feel disgruntled for a while? That's happened. Um, usually I just, like, move on. All right. 190. Are you friendly in voice, attitude, and expression? I hope so. What do you think? Uh, 191. Does life seem, seem rather vague and unreal to you? Um, no. Life is very real to me. And, oh, shit, man. Oh, good. They're done. <laughs> One of those big old, uh, 
groundskeeping trucks was going to come up this way and they saw me. My, my camera's parked in the middle of this little street here. All right. No, life doesn't seem unreal to me. Life seems real. Here, life is but a dream. Bullshit. <laughs> no, life is real. So is, so is dying. 192. Do you often feel upset about the, the fate of war victims and political refugees? Upset? Uh... It's sad. It's sad. Upset might be overstating. All right. 193. Do mere acquaintances appeal to you for aid or advice in their personal difficulties? Oh, fuck. Here comes a truck. I gotta move. Is he gonna stop? Are you going through? Hey. God damn it. Fucking my video up. I hope I get this right now. God damn it. I gotta reposition. Alright, where the fuck was I? See, that's real. That happened. It wasn't surreal. It wasn't vague. Life is real. Alright. Uh, yeah, do mere acquaintances appeal to you for raid or advice and their personal difficulties? Yeah, that does happen a lot. I don't get it. Alright. 194. If you lose an article, do you get the idea that someone must have stolen or mislaid it? Yeah, me. I'm someone. I'm like, God damn it, Rich! Where the fuck is that? But you know what? Then I do that trick and often I can find it. You know, that is to shut down the worrying and, I mean, think about it and then stop thinking about it. And then let your subconscious work on it. That's an old trick. They didn't invent that. No, I'm not paranoid, okay? Is that's what you're asking? <laughs> 195. If you thought that someone was suspicious of you or your actions, would you tackle them on the subject rather than leave them to work it out? Case by case situation there. Um, if I think they're like a paranoid fucktard, I don't know. I might say, hey, dickhead, let's talk about this. Or I might go, you know what, fuck this. Let that guy spin his wheels, I don't give a fuck. All right. 196. Do you sometimes feel that your age is against you too young or too old? Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel like I kind of should have got my act together a lot sooner. I mean, I thought sometimes it'd be nice to start a new job but I'm going to be 52 in April. So I feel that my age is against me starting a new job. Even though I've had 22 years at the current job, I'm, I sometimes think it'd be nice to do something else, but ain't probably going to happen. And they seem to like me where I'm at, so I guess I'll just stay there because of my advanced age. 197. Do you have spells of being sad and depressed? for no apparent reason? Fuck yeah, and it sucks. I've been learning skills to, to disarm that and, you know, turn it around and get it out of my life and get back to the business of living. But yeah, it happens a lot. I mean, for just no reason at all, I'll just start feeling like, like life hurts, like everything aches, that, like all the colors are being bleached or, you know, snapped out of reality. It's not a surreal feeling, that's the problem. It feels very real. So, that sucks. Fortunately, I'm feeling pretty good today, and I'm enjoying it immensely. 198. Do you do much grumbling about conditions you have to face in life? I have, but I find it doesn't do any good. So, sometimes I just you know, I'll stop before expressing it and go, you know what, Rich? Fuck it. Nobody likes to hear this shit. Okay.
199. Do you tend to hide your feelings? I guess I already answered that. Yes. 200. Do you consider you have many warm friends? I haven't taken all their temperatures, but yeah, they, they're probably pretty warm. Uh, yeah, I like that, that warm humanity. I like people with good, good dispositions. What's this thing? If under 18, have your parent or guardian sign, and then sign them up too. I hereby consent for my son slash daughter to take this personality test and receive an evaluation for the results. I understand this test is free and places him slash her under no obligation. Parent, guardian, signature, and there's that little signature. Now, refold this page with the address on the outside. Tape it shut and mail it in. And they're not providing postage, so you've got to pay to mail it. We will call you as soon as we receive it and set up an appointment for your confidential test analysis. I got a better idea. They can watch this fucking video and tell me what they think. Anyhow, uh, glad to have this done. That was interesting. Uh, I think it tells us more about LRH. If he wrote this test. I think he did. Well, I think it tells us more about these people than it does about me. Anyhow, I think more people should take this test on video. I hope that happens. All you have to do, take one of those stress tests. When you're feeling really bad, pump it up, tense all your muscles, squeeze that thing, and think, I'm going to blow that machine up. I'm going to bury the needle on the wrong side. And believe me, they'll want you. They're not looking for people who are well-adjusted. They're looking for people who are fucked up. <laughs> so they can fuck them up some more. You know, because they just... They become so happy to work for the group. Anyway, I hope this was interesting, and... I'll probably talk about these guys a little more in the future. So, let me know what you think. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful... Whatever the fuck it is you're having... And stay away from these guys.